In this video, we'll explore an unsupervised learning algorithm called k-means clustering. K-means clustering is one of the simplest and popular supervised algorithms and there are plethora of real-world applications of k-means clustering which we will talk about in this video. And in the next video, we will see the implementation of k-means and how easy it is when compared to algorithms like SVMs and etc. Now, before we jump into the algorithm itself or even supervised learning, we must understand what clustering means. So, clustering is the process of dividing the entire data into groups or also known as clusters based on the patterns in the data. Let's try to understand that with a simple example. A bank wants to give credit card offers to its customers. Currently, they look at the details of each customer and based on this information, decide which offer should be given to which customer. Now, the bank can potentially have millions of customers, right? Does it make sense to look at all the details of each customer separately and then make a decision? Certainly not. It is a manual process and will take a huge amount of time. So what can the bank do? One option is to segment its customers into different groups. For instance, the bank can group the customers based on their incomes. The groups that are shown here are known as clusters and the process of creating these groups is known as clustering. Awesome. Now let's talk about unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning is a type of machine learning algorithm used to draw inferences from data sets consisting of input data without labeled responses. So to understand all of this, let's see how a supervised, supervised algorithm works first. We have a labeled data set with the output or target variable. In this particular example, the task is to predict whether a loan will be approved or not. As we have all the data labeled with appropriate targets, we call it as supervised learning. In clustering, we do not have a target to predict. We look at the data and try to club similar observations and form different groups. Hence, it is an unsupervised learning algorithm. So let's see where this helps us in the real world. So starting with customer segmentation, as we discussed before about the bank making clusters based on the income for the credit cards. Next thing is document clustering. This is another common application. Let's say you have multiple documents and you need to cluster similar documents together. Clustering helps us group these documents such that similar documents are in the same clusters. The next is image segmentation. We can also use clustering to perform image segmentation. Here, we try to club similar pixels in the image together. We can apply clustering to create these clusters having similar pixels in the same group. The next is recommendation engines. Let's say you want to watch or you want to recommend songs to your friends. You can look at the songs liked by that person and then use clustering to find similar songs and then finally recommend those songs to the person. So let's we uh, let's talk about k-means clustering now. We have finally arrived to the main part of the video. Now, with regards to generating clusters, our aim here is to minimize the distance between the points within a cluster. There is an algorithm that tries to minimize the distance of the points in a cluster with this android. This is called the k-means clustering technique. The main objective of the k-means algorithm is to minimize the sum of distances, distances between the points and their respective cluster centroid. Let's see how the algorithm works in action. So we have these eight points we want to apply to we want to apply k means on to create clusters. So let's see how we can do that. The first step in k means is to pick the number of clusters k. Next, we randomly select the centroids for each cluster. Let's say we have two clusters, so the k is equal to two here. We then randomly select the centroid. Step three. Once we have initialized the centroid, we assign each point to the closest cluster centroid. Here you can see that the points which are closer to the red point are assigned to the red cluster, whereas the points which are closer to the green point are assigned to the green cluster. Now, once we have assigned all of the points to an either clusters, the next step is to compute the centroids of newly formed clusters. Here, the red and green crosses are the new centroids. Now, we repeat steps 3 and 4. So, essentially, uh, there are three ways to stop k-means clustering. First 
is the centroid of newly formed clusters do not change. So if the centroids don't change, that means we have reached the end and that is the best way we can actually cluster our data. Second, the points remain in the same cluster. So if the points remain in the same cluster, that means that there is no a further possible way or uh, a possible way to improve our clustering algorithm. And the last is the maximum number of iterations that are reached. So the uh, number of iterations uh, is uh, subjective, so it depends from person to person. So we can actually focus more on the first two points and not on the last point as much. So coming to the implementation, uh, we have two choices. We can either use the scikit-learn library and imp import the k-means model and use it directly, or we can write our own model from scratch. So writing our own model from scratch using NumPy and Python is very easy for k-means, but to see how uh, the algorithm works very fastly, so we'll implement k-means using the scikit-learn library. So we will use scikit-learn to implement the k-means clustering algorithm. Let's get started. First, we import all the required libraries. So we need MATLAB, sorry, matplotlib, dot pyplot as plt. We need numpy to handle the data. And we need the cluster from scikit-learn. Let's wait for it to run. The star here indicates that it's currently running and we have run it properly. Now let's prepare the data. Uh, let's create a NumPy array of 10 rows and two columns. So it's better to actually show you how k-means is implemented using our own uh, uh, pre-made data set and not a real-time data set because it gets really confusing. So we start with a simple handcraft data set and then we move to a complicated real data set. We create a NumPy array of data points because the scikit-learn library can work with NumPy array type data inputs without requiring any preprocessing. So we can directly focus on implementing the algorithm and not worry about preprocessing in the initial stages of implementation. So this is the NumPy array. Now let's visualize the data. Uh, the written code simply, or the code which we're going to write, simply plots all the values in the first column of X array against all the values in the second column. So let's see what the code looks like. So we make a scatter plot. And we start from zero. And we want the y values now. And let's give it a label as well while we are at it. As to position. And this is how our data looks. So from the naked eye, we have to form two clusters of the above data points. We will probably make one cluster of five points on the bottom left and one cluster of five points on the top right. Let's see if our k-means clustering algorithm does the same or not. Okay, so let's create the clusters now. To create a k-means cluster with two clusters, simply type the following script. So k-means equal to the class k means and the number of clusters which we want is equal to 2. And let's fit the algorithm now. 2 our data set x and we've done that. And yes, it is just two lines of code to actually run the algorithm. In the first line, uh, we create a k means object and pass it to the value 2 as the number of clusters. Next, we simply have to call the fit method on key means and pass the data that we want to cluster, which in this case is the x array that we created earlier. Now let's see what the centroid values the algorithm generated for the final clusters. Let's print them. And yep, those are our centroids or the centers. The output will be a 2D array of the shape 2 cross 2. Uh, to see the labels for data point, let's execute the following. So let's print k means dot labels. So let's do it here again. So let's print k means dot labels. 
and those are our two clusters so it is point by point so a cluster 0 and cluster 1 so the output is a one dimensional array of 10 elements corresponding to the clusters assigned to our 10 data points here the first five points have been clustered together and the last five points have been clustered here 0 and 1 are merely used to represent the cluster ids and have no mathematical significance towards, towards each other if there were three clusters the third cluster would have been represented by the digit 2 Let's plot the data point again on the graph and visualize how the data has been clustered. This time we will plot the data along with the assigned label so that we can distinguish between the clusters. So let's write the code for that. We'll make a scatter plot again to see how this works with our data points in x, colon, comma, 0 and x, colon, comma, 1 and c is going to be k means dot labels underscore and let the c map be a rainbow so let's see how that works here we are plotting the first column of the x array against the second column however in this case we are also passing k means labels as the value for the c parameter that corresponds to the labels the c map rainbow parameter is passed for choosing the color type for different data points. So that is how we get the differentiated uh, bluish violet color or the purple color and the red color. As expected, the first five points on the bottom left have been clustered together displayed with blue, while the remaining points on the top right have been clustered together with red. So here we have two different opposite scenarios. So the bottom has been done with red and the top right has been done with blue. Let's execute the k-means algorithm with three clusters and see the output graph. So let's implement it again. So k means equal to k means class. And now the clusters is equal to three. Let's fit our data set to this algorithm. And plot this again. So plt dot scatter x again colon and 0 x with colon and 1 c is equal to k means dot labels again and the c map is going to be rainbow and yeah you can see that again the points are close to each other have been clustered together now let's plot the points along with the centroid coordinates of each cluster to see how the centroid position affects clustering. So here we are going to also point out the cluster centroid of all the clusters which are, which we can see here. So we, are, we, have, we have three clusters here. So we will be plotting the three centroids along with the clusters. Let's write the code for that. We always use scatter plot for k-means clustering because it's easier to see uh, the scatter plot when we have to differentiate between the clusters. Colon and zero. And again, one. The C is k means dot labels again. And the C map is equal to rainbow. Now we need to plot the centroids here. So let's try that. K means dot cluster centers. If I'm right with that, and we need only till the zeroth point and we have to plot that with the y-axis so cluster underscore centers underscore colon one and let the color of these points be black awesome let's see how this looks so in the case of three clusters the two points in the middle which are displayed in red have distance closer to the centroid in the middle displayed in back between the two reds as compared to the centroids on the bottom left or top right however if there were two clusters there wouldn't have been a centroid in the center hence the red points would have been clustered together with the bottom left or top right clusters so that was a simple implementation of k-means clustering with our very own handmade data set now you can go ahead and try implementing the algorithm on real data sets thank you